Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I want to introduce you to something I could almost call my $100 bench. And if you're new to woodwork, and if you're new to hand tool woodworking, the first thing you're going to discover is you really have to have a bench to work on. And that leaves you with uh, a lot of choices. If you buy it, you're going to spend a fair bit of money. If you make it a traditional bench, you're going to uh, need a pretty good arsenal of tools, and you can actually run up a pretty high bill too. So let me kind of tell you where this came from. We had an idea to build an assembly bench. In our online workshop, we were, we were going to film the construction of my cabin maker's bench, which is made out of mahogany and bird's eye maple. But I also realized that those trying to follow along were going to need some kind of a bench to work off of. So we wanted to put together something that could be used as a cabin maker's bench and an assembly bench that could be made with minimal tools and minimal cost. So if you were to take off the vise here, the vise here, and the tool tray, you end up with a good stable solid top and a good stable frame that does cost a little less than $100. The top, I want to focus on that first, I'll back this vise off and show you, is made up, and this was, we experimented with this and I came out uh, far happier than I would have expected. The top is made up of four pieces of three quarter inch MDF, that's known as medium density fiberboard. And those four pieces are glued together. So you end up with a top that is three inches thick. And you can make whatever size you want. But in this case, it's 20 inches wide. And it is 62 inches long. Extremely heavy. But if you glue it up and keep it, glue it up so that it is flat when it dries, then it'll stay that way. And it's just a really good, solid work surface. I put a cord around, a fairly heavy cord around, both on all the top edges and all the bottom edges and the outside edges because the one thing MDF is really weak about or the factor that about it that is weak is the edge so uh, to protect and keep those corners from getting beat up really bad that's what I did and I also saturated the top with a lot of uh, several coats of tongue oil to keep glue from sticking to it and we've been using this bench for oh, two or three years so it doesn't uh, look any worse for the wear now the base was the most interesting thing, I think, and we built that out of 5 8 inch good one side fir plywood. And the idea was, how do you glue all these pieces together without having 500 clamps to do it with? So we used a, uh, a staple gun that shoots a quarter inch crown staple that was, I think, uh, 3 quarters, no, it must have been more than that, 7 8 or 1 inch, I can't remember exactly. But we took the plywood and we cut it into four inch strips. One sheet f cut into four inch strips. And you can do that with a table saw if you have it. You can do it with a uh, skill saw or a circular saw. You could even do it with a jigsaw if you had to. Anyway, and what we did is we built it, we put it together very similar to what you would do Lego almost. Now let me explain. If you look at this end trestle, the foot in this case is, I'll tell you how long it is. It's 24 and a half inches long, and it's made up out of four pieces of half inch, or pardon me, five eighths inch plywood that is glued and stapled together. The staple simply holds it in place until the glue dries. So the first piece is that full 24 and a half inches long. The next piece goes from here to the edge of this leg, and then we leave a space, and then we have a piece that goes from the inside of this leg to the inside of this leg. Then we leave a space four inches by the way, and then we have another piece on the other end. Then we take the leg, and it's made out of four pieces as well. This outside piece and this inside piece run from right here to just underneath this top stretcher. The next piece goes the full length, so it fills that gap that was left between this filler piece and this filler piece. The second, the third piece on the bay, on the foot is the same, stops right here. The third piece on the upright is the same. It goes all the way down, and we finish it right across the, uh, the other side. And then, of course, the, out, the inside piece runs the full length, and the opposite or the fourth piece of the leg stops right here at the top. So what you do is you're essentially building a mortise and tenon joint all at once. Everything is glued and stapled, so when you're done, you end up with this. It is two and a quarter inches thick by four inches, very strong, very stable. We did the same thing for the stretchers, only the only thing we did different there is we made it out of three pieces, both top and bottom. Assembled it with, uh, with bolts, 
so that you can take it apart if you have to, but it's good, strong construction. And what we did is we bolted, we used lag bolts to run up through these stretchers. I think there's three or four of them on each side up into the bottom of this MDF top to kind of help keep support this whole thing. I was worried that over time this might sag, but I actually don't think it will. And now that it's bolted firmly to this, I don't think there's any way it would sag. So we had a great assembly bench. And then we thought, well, why couldn't we convert this into a cabinet maker's bench? Well, a company called Schoberg makes, I think, what could easily be called the best uh, woodworking benches you're gonna buy today, particularly for the money. But you can also buy their vices. And what's nice about this vise is, there it is, you add the wooden jaw, they give you the handle, and this thing bolts to the underside of your bench with four bolts on either side, total of eight. And what you end up with is a great vise. It uses rectangular tubes instead of round tubes, so it doesn't rack nearly as much. In fact, there's even adjustments that you can take the racking out. So it, it's easily the best uh, commercially available vise that I have ever found. And so easy to mount. As long as you've got a, no obstructions underneath and a flat surface to mount it to, it's literally uh, minutes to put it on. So we, I uh, attached this one on this end to act as a tail vise. So if you're planning to plane a board and you need to be able to have it supported well, I went ahead and I bored several dog holes. These are one inch in diameter. I used uh, metal bench dogs that you can buy from Woodcraft. And these are all, all of the ones on this side of the bench are canted at about three degrees in this direction. And then out here in the vise, this one is canted three degrees in this direction, which helps to keep things down instead of allowing it to pop up. So if you've got a planing operation, you simply open up your vise, put the board in place, keep the bench dogs down low enough so you don't bump them with your plane, lock it in place, and you're good to go. On this side, in order to do things like cutting dovetails, you can make the vise as long as you want. Now I've got an extra, I think that is almost seven inches on either side. So I can take a board up to seven inches long, put that in place, you don't have to stand on it, it just needs to be comfortable. Holds it firmly, it's rocking on the floor. Well supported, if you put a lot of pressure on this, you'll force it to rack, but you don't need to, just as long as you've got enough pressure to keep it from vibrating when you're sawing. Now, the only problem here is these two holes couldn't go all the way down because of the vise, so we made a little short bench dog that just sits in there like that with a flat spot on it, and when you're not using it, drill the hole in the end of the the end of the uh, jaw to store it. Now I like a tool tray. I'd much rather have my tools dropping into a tool tray than down onto the floor. So we took some mahogany, dovetailed it up, used 3 8 inch um, Baltic birch plywood for the bottom, and then screwed this to the underside. The reason is that if I wanted to convert this back to an assembly bench, and I didn't mention this, but what makes this great as an assembly bench, if you're building a chest of drawers and you're having to glue it together, you're either trying to do it upright and manage two, you know, two clamps, one front, one back, all the way up, it's, which is a nightmare. Or you can lay that same chest of drawers on its side, use this bench top as a big call, and simply hang your clamps, one, on each side, one in each spot on this side, same thing on that side, and use this as your call for the bottom and tighten it up, and it's great. Anyway, you can convert this back to an assembly bench. It wouldn't take you 20 minutes to take that off and to take off these two vices and there you go. Anyway, for $100 plus the cost of two vices and a little bit of hardwood for the tail vise and minimal tools, if you're looking for a good bench, at least something to get started with, this could quite possibly be one of your best options. You should never have to flatten it and that is the downside to a solid wood bench. It is going to move over time. I know one of my benches in the last 20 years I've probably had to reflatten it four times and it's a fairly big job. This you know, if it gets destroyed, make another one. It's relatively inexpensive. It's a little more than one sheet of MDF, and you can actually buy MDF in four foot by two foot sheets, which are a little easier to manage. So it wouldn't cost a lot to re completely replace this or flip it over if it gets too beat up on the top side. Uh, last thing I want to tell you, Popular Woodworking has uh, something called a master class where they're featuring the uh, 45 or 50 episodes where we went through the entire building process that's already been filmed of this particular bench 
and you can access that through their site. So if you do a search on that on popularwoodworking.com, you can find it. And if you can't, you can always uh, fire me up an email, rob at robcosman.com, and I'll gladly get, guide you there. Anyway, good luck with your woodworking. Glad you stopped in. <laughs>